Hi, Thomas Enqvist here from Betsafe. Now the grass court season starts, so today we're looking into the Stuttgart tournament. Yes, we do that, Thomas. But before that, we have a couple of exciting days on Roland Garros, the semi-finals and the finals in French Open. But on Monday, the tennis circuit changed from the red dirt to the green, green grass, and we do it in Mercedes Cup in Stuttgart. A couple of years ago, the clay court season increased from two to three weeks. Do you think was it better before? Is it good as it is, or do, do you want do you want to see an even longer grass court season? Uh, I think it's good as it is now. I'm very happy that actually that they increased the grass court season. It's a it's a little bit of an extreme surface, I would say, but it also. Uh, challenge the players to, to, to a little bit change their style of play. I think the tennis today is fantastic uh, all around the, 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 the year, but uh, it's a little bit the same. The, the, the surfaces are a little bit, plays a little bit the same everywhere. And I think that uh, this part of the year, when the grass court season starts, it's the only time of the year where it's completely different and all the players need to make these adjustments. And I think it's fun to still see some, some good serving volley players, some good attack players can be able to upset really high ranked players. So I think it, it was a good decision uh, to, to make the grass court season longer. Also a very good decision to make uh, a little bit more space between French Open and Wimbledon. So I'm um, excited that the grass court season is going to start now. But Thomas, at the same time, nowadays we can see players playing on grass court from the baseline. We couldn't see that a couple of years ago. So is the grass so totally different from the other surfaces as it was before? Ah, it's a good point, Jonas. Uh, it definitely that the grass is very different today than it was, let's say, 20 years ago, where you kind of was forced to play serving volley because the bounce kind of didn't bounce at all. Uh, but uh, still, uh, it's a big difference from the other surfaces. Uh, the way you move on it, the way you can attack, the way you can use uh, slice, the way you can uh, serve and volley, it's, it's, it's for sure still the, the, the surface that you can attack for the attack players that can do the most damage. But you're right, absolutely, especially in Wimbledon where the grass courts are so beautiful. Uh, they are absolutely perfect, no wrong bounce at all on them. So it's, it's, it's uh, absolutely possible these days to, to, to play from the baseline there too. But uh, still, I think it's, uh, it's, 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 a, it's a very big difference, especially from coming in from the clay court season. And of course it's different from player to player, but do you think in general, is it harder to go from clay to grass or from grass to hard court or from grass to clay? What's, what's the biggest challenge? I think uh, it's a little bit the mindset, you know, on the clay, for example, you need to be very patient uh, and you need to work the rallies and you need to, uh, yeah, you know, like work the, 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 the ball and, and around the, in, 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 the, in, the, in the rallies around. But I think that on the grass court is much more one or two uh, shots a point. It's much more uh, attacking straight on the, on, on the serve. It's much more coming to the net. It's much more stepping in and taking advantage of your, sec or your opponent's second serves. So uh, it's, it's a different mindset at all. You have to be very daring and gutsy when you play on grass it, it's it's hard to play and and, and wait for your your uh, opponent to miss here you need to do a lot of points yourself and uh, you need to to play aggressive especially um, uh, against the really top players in 2015 stuttgart changed from clay to to grass and change the week in the calendar so it's played before before wimbledon and last year roger federer played for the first time in Stuttgart and he's coming back this year. How big is that for the tournament, Thomas? Well, it's obviously very big and uh, for the whole tennis world. I mean, we've all been waiting for, for Roger to, to, to come back and play. I mean, the way he started the year with winning Australian Open, winning Miami and uh, Indian Wells uh, has actually been the most impressive player so far on the tour when he was playing. Uh, he did not play on the clay. He decided to, to rest, save his energy, focus on the grass court season and the rest of the year. Uh, so we're all very, very excited to, to see Roger back uh, and to see if he can keep up the, the fantastic start of the year that he had. Do you think will he be even stronger on the grass because he didn't play on clay? 
Um, I think that he will obviously be very fresh and very motivated, and, and you know he will come into this tournament tournament with with the, with the, with a lot a lot of energy. But uh, at the same time, he's lacking matches. Uh, that's what we all thought actually when he came into our Australian Open, where he's been gone for six months, and he came in and he played like he never been been out of the game at all. So I mean, uh, if it's anybody who can just switch it on, it's, it's Roger Federer, and especially on his favorite surface. So I think that not going to be that big of an issue for him. But of course. I mean, he's, he's been out now for a couple of months and then hasn't played a, a competitive match in, in, in a while. So um, he needs to, to, to get into the tournament, win a couple of matches, and then he's going to be, of course, dangerous. Among his 91, 91 titles, he has 15 on grass. And 15, it doesn't sound that much, but they don't play so much on grass. So it's 15 is unbelievable good. And he has 152 wins and only... Th- 23 losses on clay. What can you say about his fantastic records? Ah, it's, uh, it's amazing. I mean, all the records that he has is just amazing. The, the amount of Grand Slams, the amount of, of, of finals he has played, the amount of titles. I mean, this is just another record that Roger has that is just unbelievable. Um, he loves the grass. He can adjust to, to, to any kind of any, any, any kind of play. Uh, on, in Wimbledon, when the ball bounces a little bit higher and the surface is very even, he plays a little bit more from the baseline. Usually when he plays in Halle or, or the warm-up tournaments to Wimbledon, where the grass is a little bit quicker, lower bounce, he plays much more serve and volley. So he's, he's such a compl- complete player, so he can adjust to anything. And he also is a fantastic mover on the grass, which is also very important on grass court tennis not only the big serves and volleying and and having a big shot to to make a lot of winners but it's also very different to um, move on the grass you kind of need to like uh, not hit your feet too hard on it because it's very easy to slide you need to be very smooth uh, and uh, Roger Federer is an unbelievable example of that and the crowd in Stuttgart is only to congratulate and the last time Federer played a 250 tournament was in Stuttgart last year when he lost in the semi-final to Dominic Thiem who then took his fourth title of the year. And the the field in Stuttgart is ov- overall really strong with three players among the 15 best ranked among them Thomas Berdish and Grigor Dimitrov. First Thomas Thomas Berdish his only grass court title came in Halle to th- 2007 and he was in the Wimbledon final 2010. What do you think we can expect from him in Stuttgart and in the rest of the year? I think that uh, first of all in Stuttgart I think Thomas is a, is, a, is a very good grass court player. Like I said he's been in the final of Wimbledon and he's been uh, playing a lot of good matches on grass. He has a big serve, he's very solid in his returns, he hits the ball heavy. Uh, he's definitely uh, one of the favorites, I think, coming into this tournament. Uh, speaking about his year, I think he's a little bit disappointed the way he has played. Uh, Thomas has been like the last almost 10 years, he's been unbelievable solid. Uh, not many times that he loses to players that he sh- should not lose to. And even if he doesn't win the titles, uh, he goes deep into the weeks um, every week. And this is probably the, one of the first year in a long time that he hasn't done that. He has lost more matches early. He has lost more um, uh, to more players that he usually is not losing to. So I think that he's a little bit concerned of his form. Um, I think that he, he's, he's happy now, kind of, that the clay court season is over, that he can totally re- reload and, and, and come back on the, on the surface that he really enjoys and has played uh, well on in the past. And since 2004, he has won at least one title every year, except for three years. He hasn't a title this year. Do you think he will have one? Um, I think so. I think so. I mean, Thomas can 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 win any title. Uh, I think that, uh, like I said here before, that he, he's so solid. He's been a top player for for so many years in a row. I think he has qualified for the for the ATP uh, London Masters in the end of the year. I think five or six years in a row. That says it all. As he has been top ten player for for so long time. But he hasn't been able to take that last step to win a Grand Slam or to win a really big tournament. Uh, but for sure, I mean, he, and any time he gets into the tournament, especially a tournament like this, 250 tournament in Stuttgart, he has a good chance to win. And then Dimitrov had a lot of expectation, expect, expectations for him during several years. Now we talk more about Dominic Thiem and Alexander Zverev. Do you think that's good for Grieger, that he can be more relaxed? 
I think so in a way, but at the same time, it's been so long now. So I don't think that's an issue anymore of him that he has expectation. I think he, it was a big issue for him, I think a couple or three years ago, but I think now it's, uh, it's, uh, it's not an issue anymore. Now it's about to, to, to reach the level that he needs to reach to be able to play, uh, um, you know, more solid, more consistent. Uh, we were very excited about him in the beginning of the year where we thought his focus was back. He, he won a lot of matches. Um, and then I think that it's a little bit disappointing clay court season from Dimitro here. So I also think that same as with Thomas Berders, he's happy the clay court season is over. I'm sure he's looking forward for the grass. He has a great game on grass. Uh, he has played really well also in the past in Wimbledon. So I think that uh, uh, a good start in Stuttgart for Dimitro is important to get back some confidence. And, uh, and uh, it's going to be interesting to follow him. Steve Johnson is another dangerous player on clay he took the title last year in nottingham and as we said it's a strong field in stuttgart and thomas it's time to make your picks for the winners and the his biggest contenders in mercedes cup uh, yes of course we have to start with roger federer uh, Everybody is so excited to have him back on the tour uh, after choosing not to play on the on the clay. He's going to be extremely hungry. He wants to have as many matches as possible before he gets into Wimbledon. For me, he's even if he hasn't played uh, competitive matches for a couple of months now, uh, he will be the big favorite. Uh, we already mentioned Dimitrov, Berdych. Uh, also good gra uh, grass court players who uh, hasn't had the success on clay that they wanted to have so I think also they are very keen on getting back on the on the winning record and having a good first week on grass. Great Thomas, thank you and uh, thank you for watching. Thank you very much and thanks for watching.